Now, um, I want to get to the book because one thing that really caught my eye was that your father was among the founding members of Gerak Khan back when they actually had a substantial win over the alliance and then that led to the May May 13 riots. Um, you know, like, why... I mean, as you mentioned in the book as well, you talk about how um, it's very rare for a sociologist to become a politician. Mm. What what was the need for your father at that time to say, hey, I'm going to be one among the founding members of Gerak Khan and take on the alliance? Why did he do that? Well, um, I think in, in some families and in some individuals, they... Um, they take it upon themselves a, a, a kind of moral responsibility, you know, do something for the people, do something for the nation, and of, of that generation uh, especially. So, you know, as, as an intellectual, he wanted to, um, you know, put theory into practice. You, you, you want to s see if, uh, you know, certain, certain ideas for the nation can be put into practice, and how do you do this? You form, you form a political party. Yeah. And uh, he was also involved, you know, with some uh, political groups in Indonesia, um, the, the, the progressive Islam side. And, of course, as a young student in, Amst uh, in Amsterdam, I mean, we're talking about the, um, uh, the, the 1950s and then, and then later the 19 early 1960s as well. Uh, this was just after the war in Europe, and um, people were becoming very, um, you know, they were, they were developing their political consciousness. I mean, right after the war... Universities were places of, of yeah. activism, mm -hmm. so you know he was he was in that in that atmosphere, and um, yeah, it's not it's not very common for um, a sociologist or an intellectual to also join politics. I mean, in my book, I mention uh, I mention a few names, uh, uh, people like in Italy, Benedetto Croce, or and and don't forget Wang Gangwu, Professor Wang Gangwu was also one of the founding members of Garakan, and he too. Know Chinese historian, very important for the region. So yeah, it's um, you know the next question is maybe intellectuals are not cut out for politics. That's usually the case in um, and as as you know, my father's um, uh, you know life in politics was was quite erratic and yeah. quite quite short lived. Yeah, I I would I would like to say that Gerakan was not you know the reason for the May thirteen riots, but it was, you know, one of a series of chain reactions, yeah. and it was implicated, uh, implicated by by others. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in some sense, the, the, just the, the to yeah, yeah, just just to you know. <laughs> Understand, yes. Yeah, sure. But I think but their their performance at the elections really was one of the reasons, yes, definitely, that that yes. sparked that whole, right? Now, yes. what was your father's opinion of the ruling elite then? Because, and again, in your book, there is a line where you quote, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think one of his campaigning, uh, when he was campaigning for Gerak Khan, yes. where he condemned the ruling elite for preferring to build golf courses as to spend, ah, to spend the money right. on understanding communal issues. So what was his opinion then? Well, um, okay, all of this is in, is in the archive. If you do research, as, as I did, you can find these newspaper clippings. And, um, well, you know, his his opinion then of the elite is was the same. It, it remained constant. Uh, you know, my 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 father had a slight socialist inclination, and so of course, um, you know, he he renounced. He re rejected the uh, uh, excesses of uh, behavior in um, in the elite or in the bourgeoisie of uh, mm. uh, you know anywhere. So he 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 led a rather you know, modest, I, I wouldn't say Spartan, but a simple, a simple life. So um, the excesses represented to him a kind of, you know, unnecessary overspending, a ki the kind of decadence that uh, uh, may not be good for the country, uh, may not be a good um, role model for, for younger, um, yeah, and of course, preference, right? I mean, he would much prefer po a politician who, or the elite who reads books and writes mm. rather than playing. Uh, it, it's it's his personal. Uh, yeah. But, you know, uh, to no avail, because, as you know, uh, I wouldn't say half of Malaysia is covered with golf courses, but <laughs> certainly, uh, you know, it's become a, f a thing, an important yeah. part of um, the practice or the, the leisure yeah, uh, aspect of, of, of the elite. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I mean, he just had his his opinions, but nobody really ever ever took them seriously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I've, I've, if if he were alive today, 
what do you think his viewpoint will be on the current state of the party, Gerakan? Well, uh, he already knew that Gerakan had changed after it, it joined uh, the government. Yeah. So, um, I, I guess he, uh, I mean, he, he was already disappointed that, I mean, that was the reason for his leaving uh, the party. So, you know, he, Garakan joined the government and so, so be it. Yeah. Um, and I think he lamented, has there been another, you know, truly cosmopolitan multi-ethnic party in the opposition? Hmm. Not really. No, no, definitely not. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, you know, my, my father's political life has to be looked at um seriously and, and carefully and I chose not to do it because you know as a journalist sometimes we believe that other people should write their own stories to for the sake of uh, objectivity right um, yeah he was in the opposition and then very reluctantly you know he he, he tried to join other parties and then um, he had you know some direct dialogue with Amno for a while and then and then he it, he just stayed in okay. the margins of politics as i say in my book you know he had never had any official role never on any official uh, government committee or anything yeah so you know very much on the margins 